Let's not to forget Gary Lineker, of course, who remains a Stray. Number six. Sex. Music and mystery. Sex, music and history! Jazz was great. Did he ever say that? Did he ever say what? Mm, jazz. Did he ever say mm, jazz? Yeah. I think he did. Oh yeah, jazz club. Yeah, jazz. Great. Well, I think it, I've, I've heard he did. I've never watched this show. Meet me at London Bridge at 12 midnight. Bring your beef eaters! They do not scare us! They're seeking my approval. It's the eternal, fruitless search for mummy's approval. I'm not in a position to give it because I don't love them, even though, interestingly, they clearly think I do. That's what comes out of, say, Dave Angel's sketches. He thinks I love him. He's doing those skits for me. He's acting out in the hope of earning my endorsement. Hey, how you doing? My name is Dave Angel, and welcome to my little home. This is the front room. I've had some great times here, relaxing with friends, having a natter, watching the football on the telly. It was in this very room, me and my cousin watched England win the World Cup. I would have gone to the game, but there were a few people who were looking to interview me around that time. Yeah, I was a bit of a tear away then. If it wasn't nailed down, I'd have it away. But as you get older, you grow up. Your priorities change. Hey, Dave, enough about then. What about now? Now, I want to give you a word and let you try it on for size. The word is naturism. And firstly, it means getting your kid off. Now, today, I'm going to have a simple thought. There might be kids, there are people watching, but normally at this time of the day, I'd be on that trail, or to put it another way, stark bollock naked. <laughs> if you're interested in naturism, write to me at Dave Angel's Naturist Hideaway, 16 Paris Drive, Braintree, Essex, 2RB. <laughs> But crying out loud, Shirley, what are you doing here like that? This is about naturism. It's about playing badminton on the beach and all that caper. It's dressed like a dog's dinner. Get out of it. Go on. <laughs> Number five with four points. It's wigs. It's important to remember the distinction between character and caricature. For instance, the caricature of the character Denzel Dexter. Here we see the stereotype of the academic as being bearded, bespectacled, eccentric, badly dressed, bespectacled, bearded, eccentric, bespectacled. <coughs> I'm sorry, I've gone into a sort of loop triggered by my uncertainty of the word bespectacled. To put it in lay terms, they are saying, Mummy, mummy, look at me, aren't I clever? And I, in turn, am ignoring them or telling them to fuck off. Gotta be the old guy sitting by the fire with a drink. He says, yeah. And then he says, go blow at me. I'm very drunk. <laughs> that can be epitomised by um, the character Roly Birkin. But the thing is, it's very easy writing. It's just... That's all it is. With the odd word. Absinthe. Take Roly Birkin. He, conversely, wants to make me come. I think that's pretty clear to anyone watching those fireside monologues. When I was young, I mean, it happens to every young man, I'm sure. She was, a really, I mean, she was a really beautiful woman. And I was absolutely, and I was a bunch of people, and I really, she, she had a very long neck. I remember mean, that was the smallest thing I was really, She had a very intelligent, very, really piercing eyes. 
Yeah, of course, uh, war came along. Uh, it's everything really between us. I, it was, I remember that I was actually a beautiful song. I can't remember it anymore. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, as Billy said, I, I was in absolute floods of tears. Uh, and it, was, it was really very cold. And she was, was, I held her in my arms. I feel I was very drunk. At number four, we're on to one point. It's Mark Williams. And like uh, the guy comes out of the can and he, he shuts the, the door, he says, Hey, this week, I don't know where I left my coat, <laughs> which was great. <laughs> Tonight, I will be mostly revealing the genesis of my character. Hello, my name is Jesse David Botticello, and I've been playing Jesse for seven years now. I challenge you, Jesse! You are not so tough, you are a girl! I knew a couple from Droid Witch, Worcestershire, and I used to stay with them in the 80s. And I love that Worcestershire sense of humor. It was so dry. And at the time, I was into all sorts of things. Food, clothes, experiments. I thought, why not talk about them? I spoke to Paul and Charlie about it. Charlie encouraged me. Paul seemed, I, Paul seemed jealous. I said, I've created this monster. How shall I name him? And Charlie said, use your own name. So, Jesse was born. <laughs> This week, I'll be mostly eating Prozac! <laughs> People say to me, what are you doing? Playing a guy who just comes out of a door. But I don't see it as limiting at all. He simply bursts out of that shed in a real affirmation of existence. He's asking so many questions of life, of himself, of all of us. Today, I'll be mostly dangling my knob in Blumont. I love him so much. So I'd like to say to you guys, thanks. What an opportunity you gave me. For this play, you must imagine that Mutti is a small Irish peasant man. Ah, Ted. I am Ralph. I love you dearly. This is the character speaking, not myself, you understand. I am not a gay. What? Come, say it. It was a long time ago. Oh, yeah, Ted and Ralph. Great. You are an exasperation. I have told you for weeks that we would be making this film. If you do not cooperate, Mutti, I will get a friend. Yes, a friend. And then we will see who is laughing on the other side of their face. I will get a friend and have fun with them. Yes, fun, you little person. Bollocky chaps. We're out of time. Um, we only got to number four. 
Number three would have been The Simpsons. Number two, Pulp Fiction, and number one would probably be Imagine or Bohemian Rhapsody. Who knows? <laughs> Don't give us a flying fuck. Your favourite character? They're all great. Yeah. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Oh, God. I'm afraid it would have to be me. I was so in love with Andrew Ridgely. Oh, and David Cassidy, but that was an earlier decade. Rot! Yes! Rot! Damn you, you shrunken mutty, you! You know, when I was ten years old, I split a quarter JB with Dennis Harper. Far out, man. <laughs> I think they're all essentially flawed, but if I had to choose it, it'd be easy. Well, I'm all right now. I'm doing a remake of Fantasy Island for Channel 5 with Frankie DeTore. It's a wonderful business, really. Oops. <laughs> and one of ours. Not the Americans. In fact, I think it is an American play. To me, they're all essentially flawed, but if I had to choose... Massage this area with oil. 